Hi, Carl here for ProV TV, and today we're talking about ProRes RAW. Now, most of you, I'm sure, are familiar with regular ProRes. It's a format that Apple first introduced in 2007, and it's since become one of the most respected codecs in the industry, and pretty much the industry standard for both acquisition and post-production. It's based around the concept of striking a balance between maintaining as much quality as possible and giving real-time playback, even in multicam sequences. We now have six different varieties of ProRes, all at different data rates and quality levels. However, at NAB 2018, Apple announced the seventh member of the ProRes family, ProRes RAW, and it's a really big deal for the industry. Raw recording up until recently has been quite post-production intensive. Adobe Cinema DNG is the most widely used raw codec, and it's fantastic quality. But it's based around a stills image sequence, so your editing software has to rebuild it back into a video file, and it's very processor intensive. Not to mention it's a bit of a pain to work with, as you end up with hundreds of still images in a different folder for each shot. Several manufacturers have developed their own RAW codecs, which do tend to work really well. Canon's Cinema RAW Lite, Red's R3D files, and Sony's XOCN formats spring to mind, for example. All fantastic formats, which make working with RAW much more accessible. However, they are, of course, limited to very particular products within that specific manufacturer's range, and so will never be adopted as an industry standard RAW codec. So this this is the main reason that ProRes RAW is so exciting. It has the potential to become an industry standard, just like regular ProRes did before it. Regardless of the camera manufacturer or editing software, whatever your workflow is, ProRes RAW will hopefully be making your life easier. Today though, ProRes RAW's support is fairly limited. It can only be recorded using Atomos's recorders, specifically the Shogun Inferno and the 19-inch Sumo, or the DJI X7 camera. And it can only be opened and edited with Apple's own editing software, Final Cut Pro X. But the hope is that in the future, Apple will open up support to both other editing software companies so that we can edit it in Premiere Pro and Resolve, for example, and other camera manufacturers, so we can be recording ProRes RAW internally in our cameras. To record RAW using the Atmos Shogun Inferno or the Sumo, you of course need a camera that can output a RAW signal. Currently, that means using one of the following cameras. The C300 Mark II, C500 or C700 from Canon, the FS700, FS5 or FS7 from Sony, or the Vericam LT or EVA1 from Panasonic. Connect one of those cameras to the Atmos recorder and you have 12-bit RAW files over the SDI connection. There's two options though when you're recording ProRes RAW. ProRes RAW LT and ProRes RAW HQ. Both formats are a compressed form of RAW, as uncompressed RAW results in huge, unmanageable files. Both actually vary their data rate depending on the scene, but the HQ sitting between ProRes 444 and ProRes 422 HQ in terms of file size and the LT codec in between 422HQ and regular ProRes 422. So, if you're used to recording in ProRes 422HQ, for example, the file sizes with ProRes RAW will be much the same as you're currently used to. The real power behind RAW is all to do with the demosaicing process. Modern cameras use what's called a Bayer pattern to record color. Each photosite on the sensor will record a luminance value for brightness, and either a red, green, or blue color value. Red, green, and blue is split across the photosites, with each photosite recording only one of them in the pattern, which you can see here. This is a Bayer pattern. This then needs to be converted into a conventional RGB image, where each pixel has a color value for red, green, and blue. That conversion is known as demosaicing, and it's normally done in camera before recording it as a video file, but RAW, actually saves that whole process for your editing software to handle, only recording the actual Bayer image pattern before any of that demosaicing has taken place. This, of course, is more intensive on your computer as it has to do more work before it can show you an image, but it means when you're color correcting, those changes you're making are applied before the conventional RGB image is formed rather than adjusting its values after the fact. 
don't worry if that's a bit too much information. All it means, really, in the real world, is that you're going to get better images from your colour grade and more flexibility in editing software. So with ProRes RAW, you're getting all of that power in a single video file, which is no larger than normal ProRes is. And it will play back very nearly as smoothly. And it has the potential to be used with a huge variety of products. And that is a big, big deal. And that is why ProRes RAW is, for me, one of the most exciting technologies in the industry at the moment. So what do you guys think of ProRes RAW? Are you as excited as I am? Let me know in the comment section down below. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.